Welcome to the Entrepreneurial CPA Series, where we bring you the best and brightest SaaS solutions for CPAs who want to bring value-added services to their clients. Every episode is an interview with a new solution provider dedicated to you, tomorrow's CPA. The Entrepreneurial CPA Series is proudly sponsored by Excolo 33, Building Value. Visit us at excolo33.com. Are you a partner of a CPA firm struggling to be seen as the expert in a sea of sameness? Are you looking to differentiate yourself and your firm as providing true value added services and not just ticking boxes on your client's compliance checklist? Excola 33 is a coaching business dedicated to accelerating growth and profitability in your CPA firm. Our 100 day business growth challenge has helped firms just like yours generate leads, create profitable relationships and stand out as tomorrow's CPA firm. Sign up for Excola 33's free training, eight steps to productize your service, where you will discover three reasons service companies are getting hit hard now. You will learn the surprising secret that Harvard professor Theodore Levitt taught his students about why we buy. See how nine service businesses transform themselves into product companies and get the eight step formula for productizing your service. Click the link below or visit us at bit.ly slash techs eight steps. Again, the link is below. This is a free course. It's a workshop and we'll walk you through how you can implement the eight steps to productize your service. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Entrepreneurial CPA Series. Today I'm really excited to have Patrick Stern and Patrick is the Senior Account Manager with Spotlight Reporting. So Patrick, tell me who you are and why this role is an important role for you. And then we're gonna get into some great stories about you and how you help account. Perfect, perfect. Well, thank you very much for having me. Excited to be here, Jeff. And um, hello, everyone. Very nice to meet you as well. Um, yeah, so as the senior account manager, I've been you know, with the company for several years now. Um, I come from the consulting world, um, but you know, it's always interesting as we, in these types of roles, are the talking heads or the faces of you know, a lot of these companies. And I say that in general, because there's so many different app ecosystem companies. And so, you know, for me personally, I come from the consulting world before I've worked with a myriad of different industries and everything. And I was brought in to really help spotlight um, grow um, and expand here in North America. So I am all over Canada. Um, but all over the U.S. as well. So in normal times, I'm traveling a lot, um, putting a lot of time in in different cities, obviously conferences, but more importantly, sitting down with you know accountants themselves and putting you know the face to the name and working through and brainstorming their unique kind of value proposition, but also go to market strategy and how they're working with their clients. And that's something that I personally love is you know the tool has a playbook and it is what it is and there are certain value adds there but what is the unique kind of situation and variables that you're dealing with to grow your business and grow your business you might be a sole proprietor all the way to you know a hundred thousand clients you know and big four you know there's a broad range of experiences there but it's all a human experience that we're all figuring out you know and problem solving together i love it and so let's talk and, and just, you know, our audience is very used to getting to know the person behind the, the, the software. So uh, sure. I, I, I hesitate to call Spotlight a tool, but the reality is, you know, these are tools that we put in the hands of experts who, who can do things. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a story, if you will, and, and I like stories. So if, you know, if you have one, tell me a story about how the spotlight tool has helped some of the the accountants that you know um you know we talk a lot about relationships and and how we can add value um, sure how can something like spotlight help the accounting profession add value to their clients and their business 
Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's something that I learned very quickly and early on in the role was just, you know, I, I spoke with actually a business owner. It wasn't an accountant initially. I spoke with a business owner who was using our tool and just coming up to speed and learning it. And he used a really interesting kind of key phrase that I think accountant, accountants certainly talk about, but it, it really grounded me in the reality of what a business owner thinks about. So they, you know, San Diego based firm, they actually provide um, uh, uh, counselors to various uh, clients who have autistic children or somewhere in the spectrum. And so they have several therapists, you know, various qualifications that are working with children after school programs, during school, you know, all that kind of stuff. But they have several locations and managing the expenses uh, for travel and for all these different things that lead up to the actual work that needs to be done was a huge sore point for this particular owner. And he was a young guy. He actually, his name was Patrick as well. And so it was really interesting because he's like, this tool, Spotlight, helps me sleep at night because I don't have to sit and worry about stuff. I have better clarity and understanding of what the problems that I'm facing are rather than worrying and not knowing at all. <laughs> and I, I, I was that. like, that's, that's amazing because it's just like, as an accountant, as a finance person, or as a business owner, or anybody, honestly, if you know what the problem is that you're trying to solve versus just trying to understand the problem, that is value right there. And I feel like ever since that kind of story or that just kind of like interaction with this business owner, it was really cool and just kind of grounding for me as I like kind of have to like knock myself on the head sometimes and ground myself in the reality of like, hey, what keeps you up at night? Yeah, that's what I should be solving and thinking about, you know, and whether it's a multitude of different tools or solutions or anything like that. Once we frame up the problem and we understand what variables we're dealing with, especially from a monetary standpoint, it helps tremendously. And that's that's the value that we provide as accountants. I love it. And, and thank you for sharing that, because one of the things I always tell accountants is part of your conversation should be what keeps you awake at night. Totally. And, and the, they always push back and say, well, what if I don't know how to fix it? Mm -hmm. um, reality is even if you're, if you don't know how to fix it, at least asking about it again, if we can identify a problem, we can find a solution together. Right. So, well, and I think that's half the value sometimes is like business owners, you have to realize are inherently problem solvers that yeah. is what we do you know and you and each of us as accountants especially if you're running your own practice you're doing it constantly you know <laughs> and it becomes a critical like skill set as you navigate and grow and you know resolve new issues you know and um and you know good business people really appreciate people that can frame up the problem and tell them what's going on. They don't necessarily need an answer. They might want some suggestions based on your experience, but if you can't provide that, that's okay. You're still helping them assess the problem that they need to solve and they'll figure it out some way, shape or form. Yeah. And I think that's the, the, where I think a lot of accountants get nervous is I have to solve everything. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite quotes is, um, and I don't know if I've shared this, but um, Charles Kettering, he was an innovator at G General Motors. Mm -hmm. His saying that I love is a problem well-defined is half solved. Um, mm. I, I think as, as professionals, if we can help them get clear, you know, put the parameters in place, you know, understand what's going on, um, mm. that is enormous value in and of itself. Now, right. the right. next bonus is maybe we can help them take that next step and solve it. Um, but the reality is just helping them get really clear, you know, is this a, a massive problem that's going to bring the business down? 
or is it just something you know that'll help them sleep a little sounder at night so yeah yeah well and people have to i, I just had a thought actually and you say that or was like half your clients actually have problems that you could probably help and solve the other half really just need a therapist but you're there <laughs> exactly. no, and, so. and i think that's the part and and this is slightly off topic but one of the things a lot of accounts are like oh i don't know how to solve problems one of the fundamental things i've observed is that entrepreneurs are some of the loneliest people on the planet um, oh, yeah. You know, they can't go home and, and share their woes with their spouse, with their kids. Uh, they definitely can't share it with their clients, with their employees. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times all they need is that little bit of therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a little bit of an outlet. It's, it's actually interesting. I was working with a, a small firm. They started during the middle of the pandemic, actually, um, back in August and they had a really great story. They've had great growth. They use Spotlight extensively, um, you know, to help drive a lot of that growth and everything. But they had a really unique story and a client that they worked with, where it was an entrepreneur that had started his business before the pandemic, but like his goal and his question constantly was, when can I pay myself? And that, that is like such a fundamental question, yep. but it's like, you know, they took our tool and, you know, use the cash flow forecasting and, and were able to build out a bunch of, you know, a couple of yeah. different scenarios, but that like gave him hope, honestly, you know, with his wife and he could actually tell his wife like a timeline, you know, on which he could actually pay himself and not continue investing, you know, the way he was. And to have that, again, frame up the problem, but be able to provide a little bit of insight, you're not yep. solving the problem. The problem of how to pay himself is his problem, you know, but what you're doing is you're just giving him direction, suggestions, yep. and a listening ear, honestly, especially in the discovery phase when you first initially engage in kind of crafting a solution that you're able to provide for them. No, I love that. And again, one of the things I'll, um, you know, editorialize is that accountants and, and for the record, Patrick, I was this guy, so I'm not criticizing anyone else. Um, <laughs> I used to pre produce amazing spreadsheets, if I do say so myself, you know, oh, yeah. I I'd calculate and I'd say, see line 56, there you go. And the client would be like, I don't know what you're talking about. And that was a, a big aha for me was that, you know, we understand things at the granular level. We can get into a spreadsheet and we can tell you, you know, based on the formula, here's what's going to go, go on. Here's what's happening. Mm -hmm. But the reality is most entrepreneurs, especially if they're not sleeping at night, if they're stressed out, they're not going to go through, you know, a 30 page spreadsheet and find you know, the one line that says there's hope, um, they just need that quick little reporting. And, and by the way, if you can be the person who translates, uh, I always say translate accounting to English, um, but visual English, um, mm. I, I love little dashboards. I love, you know, red, red, yellow, green, you know, are we in danger? Are we sort of neutral? Are we doing well? Um, right. But if, if you can translate the numbers, a funny thing happens, that client's never going to leave you. So, right. you know, I assume you've got a couple stories in that space, but, you know, I, I'm going to guess you being you, me being me, that you probably have a bunch of stories where accountants come up to you really excited about, you know, some big turning point in a client relationship. And they're like, Patrick, you're never going to believe this. Um, do you have any like that you'd love to share that, like, I, I'm guessing you get at least one of those a day. Sure. I mean, I wish they were where they're once a day. It's not, I don't, uh, just for those of you that are listening or watching, it's always the best thing, at least for someone like me to hear these stories, because 
again, it just grounds the reality of like what is going on, you know, and, and those successes and even failures are, are good to know, but like, you know, so, so the point being share them <laughs> with your reps, you know, with the folks that you work with, because it helps us, you know, better serve you as well. Um, but I think, you know, to that point of like, you know, what's a dashboard, you know, at the end of the day, what is a report at the end of the day, you know, we can generate and get stuff out and we can spend an inordinate amount of time and we've all done it where, you know, it's really valuable. And I would say I, so I was the director of business development for a client services firm. We did uh, user experience research and design and did that for a couple of years. And we had a virtual CFO come in, part-time CFO come in that helped our CEO and co-founder. And he would always come up with these big, massive spreadsheets, you know, um, <laughs> monthly and quarterly. And, I, and, you know, I'm, I'm responsible for business development. I'm, I'm responsible for growth. And there would be all these numbers and they would have spent all this time putting all this stuff together, but it's the Delta of like, do you realize how many conversations I have to have in order to like get to that point to have yeah. that kind of pipeline, to have that kind of revenue? Like you're just not steeped in reality yeah. first off. But then I also scrutinize and go through your spreadsheet and then I find a couple errors and I'm like, okay, come yeah. on. Like, but it, but that's where the collaboration goes, you know, and that's where the iteration. And if I had, you know, two more conversations with him, then I'd be more confident in his predictions, regardless of what tool he presents it to me. In. And that I think, you know, don't worry about trying to get it right the first time. Start small, start simple though. And that's where you get the feedback from the client. So what we usually recommend is start with a base template and that's where it's scalable. Base template, simple, straightforward. Every client gets one. Mm -hmm. And then it slowly graduates and moves them up as they want more because they want and they see that you can adapt it, you can change it to their needs and it creates more value for them. Right. Also makes it more sticky. And then <laughs> later on, you know, as you've kind of progressed, then you move them up to certain tiers, you know, um, for that customization, for that forecast, for that consolidation, you know, whatever it is that you might be doing for them. But, you know, starting from like what we call the gateway drug <laughs> <laughs> report that, you know, opens that door to value and that iterative, that as much as most accountants would say, I hate it when the client comes back and asks for additional things, that's how you grow your practice. That is an opportunity right there. So, well, and, and I'm going to call out a word you mentioned because I, I use sticky a lot. And yeah. um, a lot of accountants look at me like I'm using a very strange word. And I, I just want to point out that sticky is, in fact, good when it comes to clients. Um, so, Tell me, how are you seeing clients becoming stickier um, because of reporting? You know, it's honestly, it, it all, as you realize, and as there's pressure on the industry overall, everything's getting automated. Tax is getting automated. This is getting, bookkeeping is getting automated. This yeah. is getting, but at the end of the day, like, I think that this probably the most, the, the simplest answer to that, because it could be a philosophical debate and I could probably get torn <laughs> apart on Twitter for this, but like it's, it's the human element, you know, it's yeah. that connection point. And especially for bigger firms, they, it's hard to do that, but you have to realize that even the junior accountant that runs that base level, simple template, you know, can provide additional value, which is proactive value. It is floating and bringing additional things up. And if you are reactive, then that is what you will find yourself in. And they, you will join the rest of them, you know, that are the same, same way. And they can, as a business owner, we could evaluate you. And, you know, I'm just thinking as the client, like I 
would prefer somebody that is proactive, that is looking out for my best interests. And that is a human element that you cannot put into AI. You know, yes, the AI is able to do analysis and float different stuff and red, you know, flag this or, you know, say this is good. But at the end of the day, if you are not matching what keeps you up at night mm. with the goals that the client is trying to achieve, and then being able to interpret and do that analysis on that report and just get a little bit of insight and be able to say, hey, I just sent over your report, you know, nothing to you know, worry about right now, but I just want to let you know, we should talk maybe for a quick half an hour just about how we can make sure that we hit payroll next month. Love you it. Know, that, that little like tidbit and extra value, whether you throw it in the executive summary and you teach them that that's where you're going to put your comments or you put it in the email or you send them a text message. I don't care. It's up to you guys. <laughs> but like that, that is the sticky element, you know, the proactive side, however you capture that, that is, those are the sticky elements I feel. I, I love that. And one of the things that, you know, I've spent a lot of my career teaching accounting professionals how to leverage technology and mm -hmm. I, I swear to god every time i speak um i say this is so you can have better relationships with your clients mm -hmm. inevitably someone here is automate this so you don't have to talk to your clients um, i want to make it really clear that neither you nor i are saying to them you know you can run these reports and yeah. you never have to communicate. And, and I want to point out the fact that you, you deliberately said, you know, pick up the phone, send them a text, you know, whatever it is. But yeah. don't assume, you know, the, the thing I, I, I find hilarious is when we assume in a communication loop, you know, communication only happens when I have a message that I share. And then you, on the other hand, say, I received that message. I understand, you know, it's not enough to say, well, I sent them the report. Um, so I, I just want to be really clear that you and I are on the same page there. This is not, oh, there's a red flag, but it's in the report. We'll just let it be. This is, oh, let, let's have a chat about how are we going to meet payroll? And, and by the way, I think the other key phrase you had there was next month, not tomorrow. Right. Right, right, right. So there, exactly. there's a lead time there. <laughs> there, there is, you know, there's gradients. You know, a lot of firms get to a point where they have a relationship where they, they've gone through the education phase. The client really understands the report and values the report. But then there's like additional out, you know, value add additions where there's a meeting, you know, on a quarterly basis or something like that that goes through. And then, you know, everybody is different, but it's, it's usually a red flag when I have an accountant that comes and is evaluating my tool where they're like, yeah, so do you automate reports? Can you like set up scheduled reports to go out and stuff like that? And I kind of like, my jaw doesn't necessarily drop, but you know, I'm just like my friend. Yeah. Swing Let me in. tell you why this is, this is, I mean, it's just fundamental. I mean, I'm sorry, like as much as we want to automate everything, you need to look at this report and you need to send it out. You know, yeah. you need, you are the final check and balance because that trust is the most important thing that go back, it goes back to like the human element. They don't trust the report that you're putting in front of them. Like remember how, how I checked the CFO virtual CFO's report and I found errors, you know, if I don't have a dialogue with him promptly after, I'm not going to look at your next report because even if there are, if it's squeaky clean and you got everything in there from the last time, uh, that's seeded a little bit of doubt. Yeah. And the way you can mitigate that is through conversations and talk through that, you know, and continue to build on that because mistakes happen. We're human. But having that relationship, I think, is important as you grow. And figuring out how to scale that is, you know, duly important. You need to teach your staff. You need to empower them to have those conversations and not, you know, just shepherd them behind the veiled garden of your firm, you know, where they don't <laughs> do anything and they click a few buttons and it goes out. Like, empower your, your accountants and your junior staff to, to, you know, talk to your clients as well. That's okay. That's good. It's valuable. They appreciate it. I love it. And, and I do appreciate that extra insight because that's, I hear that a lot. People are like, oh, can I just automate it? Well, mm -hmm. 
yes, you can. The, the real question is, should you? So, right, 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 right. Exactly. Awesome. Now we've got a couple of minutes left. I don't want to take you too long, but um, is there anything I haven't asked you about that, you know, somebody looking at, you know, should I use a tool like Spotlight? Is there anything I haven't asked you about that we should ask about? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, and I certainly want to call out to everybody that watches this, um, that we really appreciate you getting on calls and coming and talking to us when we do demos and, and do that type of thing. And I understand it's a slog. You go to a webinar, there's follow up. You have to go through that. You are interested in a tool. You have to go and slog through, you know, I think there are 80 reporting, uh, you know, apps in the uh, Intuit marketplace right now, if not more. Yeah. So we get it. We understand it's hard to figure out stuff, but, you know, I think it helps us to, we don't want to waste your time either. We want to, you know, kind of respect and work with you. The great thing about working for Spotlight though, that I would certainly put out there is like, we are, we were originally in practice for 20 years. We've been doing this. This is a tool that is built by accountants for accountants. And so we like to have that relationship and, you know, just respect, honestly, for what you have going on. And it really helps us to, you know, understand what the context, because I will tell you, Jeff, there's nothing that makes me happier than to say, no, this tool is not a fit for you. Because guess what? You don't have to spend any more time <laughs> talking to us, you know, um, or at least it's one less, you know, tool that you need to look at. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, we are the broadest set of tools. We're reporting, forecasting, and dashboarding, so you don't have to have several tools for all that stuff. I know that some firms like to have different reporting apps um, for different things because each each does excel. And especially when you focus, it's great. But when you're trying to cover 85 to 90% of the use cases in the SMB space, you know, then, you know, pick a tool that's been around. We're celebrating 10 years in business. So we've been around the block. Yeah. We've been doing this for quite some time. And, uh, and we know how to avoid the pitfalls. You know, we, your success at the end of the day is our success. So that's the okay. relationship that we really focus on. All right, now I'm going to ask the the self serving question. If somebody wants to learn more about spotlighting, how do they they connect with either you or the team and move forward? Yeah, so probably the easiest and quickest way to you know check out Spotlight um, because a lot of us are doers. We want to play with the tool. We want to see what's going on, stuff like that. Obviously, you can just set up a trial. I usually end up reaching out to each person, you know, personally. Uh, when you set up a trial. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to set up a demo, but that's usually very helpful because then I have some context. If you have a couple clients in mind, you've already played around with the tool, you have a few questions, and then we can kind of go from there. That's usually what I would suggest. You can also book a demo directly from our site as well. Um, but I'm always happy to connect on LinkedIn um, or in Twitter. So I have people that DM me um, directly or you know connect on um, LinkedIn. That's usually the fastest way because I get those alerts on my phone and I can respond <laughs> back to you right away. So it's more of that chat, you know, instant gratification <laughs> to, awesome. rather than emails and stuff like that. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. So I'll put um, spotlightreporting.com. I'll put the link in the show notes and. Is it best to put your LinkedIn profile or is there someone else on the team or? You can, you can put mine. Um, I'm happy to, to connect you. There's a, I have a few other colleagues here in North America um, that, uh, you know, service different verticals and stuff like that. So like, especially if you're working with franchises or something like that, I would uh, happily direct you to one of my colleagues. Um, but as if you're coming from the accounting world, which I assume most people are on this, yes. um, <laughs> then I'm your man. <laughs> Love it. Well, Patrick, I really appreciate it. So again, today we've been talking to 
Patrick Stern, Senior Account Manager for North America with Spotlight Reporting. Uh, Patrick, any final thoughts or comments before we wrap up for the day? No, I just, uh, again, I really appreciate the time. Looking forward to connecting with folks. Um, again, it's nice to not have the entire talk track you know, dialed in. There's a human behind the name. <laughs> exactly. And uh, yeah, if you look me up on uh, even on Instagram, you'll you'll find me and it's you'll see that there's 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 quite a quite a life that goes on outside of all of this. So <laughs> I, I love it. And, you know, that's the, the highlight of this show for me is meeting the people behind the software. I mean, I, I love the software, but without the people, the software is not as as exciting or as important. So um, totally. Thank you very much for being on our show. Of course. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it.